Okay, we're rolling. All right. Hey, dreamers. Um, we're at Old Williamsburg, Colonial Williamsburg, and we have a lovely young lady here who's going to give us a tour, telling us all about the uh, way they have raised vegetables and made their own fencing and organic ways of growing things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, a lot of our sticks we use are from a sycamore. So um, we pollard it, which is an old-fashioned way of pruning pruning from the same spot every year so you get sucker sticks. So they, these canes are uh, one year's growth um, and you have no laterals. That's the second year you get the lateral shoots. So by pruning every year you got perfect sticks, nice and straight. Um, these are our marrow fat peas. It's an old variety used for making mushy peas, peas porridge. Another form of fencing, this is um, from a purple European willow. And uh, as you can see, it actually is budding and it rooted in. Oh, yeah. but, um, so if you wanted a uh, fence <coughs> to be permanent, you could let it root in and you'd have to trim it. But um, we try to keep ours cleaned up so they don't shade the peas out. I see. But the willow is perfect for nice bendable uh, structures. So even in colonial times, they had shade cloth for this. This is actually to keep the cabbage moth out. Cabbage butterflies. Excuse me. Excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have trouble with that. Oh, yes because we do not use any uh, spraying methods, of course, or dusting. Right. right. So that's quite effective. And you don't need pollinators for cabbage, so mm. that isn't no. a problem. Unless yeah. you were trying to save seed. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, actually a really interesting method for tomatoes. This is called a table trellis. And the way this is built is so the tomato grows up through it, and then will creep along the top. Excellent. And it's a method to keep um, any viruses and fungal diseases off the leaves and keeps the tomatoes up off the ground and easy picking. Great. Great. This structure is used for our cucumbers. Um, very easy, uh, safe space. And this is another type of trellising that's very easy. It's just branches from the woods. We just trimmed down a bunch of branches, stuck them in. Um, this is a short, a shorter variety of pea, so when these are done, we'll just roll up the whole fence and compost. Oh, okay. <coughs> um, not many people are familiar with our artichokes and cardoons. Uh, I don't even know what a cardoon is. Cardoon is in the same genus and species, actually, but instead of the flower, you're eating the stalk of it. Um, you use it like a celery substitute, really good in soups and stews. Cool, that's big. And of course our, our wattle fences are just really nice for a, a country look. Uh, during colonial times they used them for making raised beds so you could do a really tight weave um, to hold the soil. Now in. do they have to be green and soft when you weave them like that and then they turn hard or um, how are they done? <coughs> we're about three months <coughs> old before I finally had time to use them so they were still bendable enough, mm -hmm. um, but if you can use them, the fresher you use them, the more bendable they're going to be. Right. What else we got growing here? We have melons, different kinds of melons here, um, parsnips, Swiss chard. Um, this is a neat plant I just planted the other day. It's called woad. Woad? W-O-D-E? W-O-A-D. <coughs> okay. It's used for a uh, blue dye. Oh. So that'll be, the weavers will be using that. So is it a flower head that comes up that is blue that you use for dye? Or it's actually in the leaves. Wow. The leaves they look green, dye. but they give you blue dye. This is a fun, really delicious vegetable. Uh, this is called uh, salsify. I've heard of it, but I never knew what it was. Uh, and it's the roots that you're using. Okay. The roots um, are like a faux oyster used in the time. Or, uh, you know, soup and stew, you can Is stir there a flavor you can liken it to? Oysters. Exactly like oysters. oysters. <laughs> wow. And uh, this is in its second year when it's blooming. It's a really pretty blossom, so even if you want to grow it ornamentally. Is it hard to find seed for that, or can you get it in most seed catalogs? Um, it's uh, common in, in England today. Americans aren't familiar with it, but you could find it in an heirloom. Seed company right, right. would most likely have. Now, are those called cloches down there, the little glass top? Cloche is a French term. <coughs> so, in colonial times, we're referring it to uh, bell jars, what we call them. Right. 
because we're not too fond of the French yet. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> and leeks in their second year are beautiful. A lot of people don't realize you get Those are plain leeks. This is just a plain garden leek. I've got itty bitty year. ones growing in my garden. It just sure doesn't look anything like that. So if you let it go in a second year, uh -huh. it's, it is a gorgeous blossom. And, and then you get all those seeds. It's lovely. So they're the alum family. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now is this spinach here? It's awful big. What is this? This is Swiss chard. Swiss chard. Okay. Yeah, mine's rainbow, so it looks a little different. But yeah, I can see how that's Swiss chard now. Yes. In the in the beet <coughs> family, we we're calling it white beets in the 18th century. Mm -hmm. uh, some other things that are ripening up, we're going to be ha harvesting uh, within the week is our garlic. We have a soft neck and a hard neck. Shallots. They're all coming along nicely. Garlic. They look and like shallots. they have a little bloom, too. They do. Uh, we have our some more melons, bumper potatoes, a very old variety. Bumper potatoes. Lumper. Lumper potatoes. Lumper potatoes. Uh, this is celery. A lot of people don't know that the best celery is when you put it in a trench. I didn't know that. Um, and that's how you get nice white tender stalks. You're filling in the soil as it grows around the stalks. And that's kind of blanching the stalks. I was at an nice. Amish auction two years ago. And they pulled up homegrown celery. And I'm thinking, okay, celery. And it was going for $12 a bunch. I couldn't believe it. And I said, what's the deal? And they said, it tastes unbelievable like nothing you've had from the store. Ah. So it was crazy. <coughs> this is a neat plant. This plant is called rape. Uh, today, it's our source of, source of canola oil, or rapeseed oil. Yep. So it's coming from the seeds. Let's see the seed pods. Oh, yeah. Little black seeds that would be crushed for, for oil. Yep. And we have um, celeriac, or celery root. A delicious root vegetable can't really see it, uh, most of it. it. It forms like a softball size root that yeah. you uh, clean up, you know, and you, you can cube it, put it in your mashed potatoes, uh, put it in your soups. Really nice, strong <coughs> celery flavor. do you know what zones that grows in particularly? How far north it can go? That, that can grow, um, you know, it's a it's a colder crop, right. so it definitely can go colder. Just like celery would be. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. It actually would even do better at farther north. Um, radishes, a lot of people don't realize that the best part of the radish is actually the pods. So after they flower, Who they knew they had pods if you didn't let it flower, right? Delicious, <laughs> crunchy pod that tastes like a radish. I just really pulled nice. all my radish. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> and it's also a really quick way of having seeds, lots I, of seeds. I did next. something wrong and I had all leaves and, and the radishes on the bottom were like minuscule, so ah. I yanked them out. But if I left them, I could have had some pods probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're delicious just thrown in a salad or you can, uh, in colonial times, they would pickle the bigger ones and use them later. They're cool. delicious. Well, I'll have to try that. And what else? have um, our herbs, of course. I don't know if you're interested yes, in talking about Yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> we grow herbs and teas. Do you have any tea type things here as well? We do, yes. Forehound has been traditionally used for centuries as a cough drop, cough syrup. I've ordered some seed. I haven't planted it, so I don't know how I'll It's probably. real easy. You just stick it in a corner somewhere and there it'll stay forever. And how do you actually process it for use? Is it the um, root or the leaf? You or? make a syrup from the leaves, I believe. You dry it first okay. and then you make a syrup. Uh -huh. um, I actually like horehound candy. Yeah, it is. It's easy. Valerian uh, is used for insomnia, anxiety, muscle tension. Uh, and that's the root is what you're using from that. Okay. Really Valerian. nice flower. It's pretty much <coughs> um, St. John's wort. Of course, we know that. Yep. As, uh, Russian. It can be used for. They make teas out of tea, it. Tea. I yeah. believe it. Yes, they use yeah. in teas. Um, lemon balm is an excellent way for making tea. It's very good for uh, your throat, 
um, for low immunity. And some unusual ones, Ella Campaign is a beautiful Say, say that again. Ella, Ella Campaign. Ella Campaign. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but... Um, Close enough. I didn't close, know what it yeah. was. <laughs> Huge long word. Uh, that's really good for problems in the bronchial area, you mm -hmm. know, um, respiratory. Mm -hmm. uh, Foxglove, of course, a lot of people know that one. Digitalis. Digitalis. Mm -hmm. I Heart would never process it no. myself, and I wouldn't suggest anyone else No, to. not if it does major things with your heart. Yes. You wouldn't want to no, do that. No, I don't want enough of that. <laughs> no. <coughs> Uh, let's see what else we have. Comfrey is an excellent herb. I just planted comfrey, and I it also makes terrific compost. Yes, it does. Yep. It mm -hmm. does. Compost tea, yeah. uh, especially. Yep, for the plants, not for the people. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, aloe. What does aloe need? I picked a half-dead one up, hoping I could nurse it back, and I planted it, and it just got totally dead. So, I don't know. Uh, you needs. just never water it. That's uh -huh. my secret. Don't okay. ever water it. it. Yeah, it got a lot of water where it was. <laughs> yeah. And okay. uh, we have to bring ours into a greenhouse at the end of the year. We okay. don't need it out over the winter, obviously. It's yes. not enough last. An excellent... I love this. This one's lovage. Um... A love brilliant, it? brilliant taste, like celery, but oh. you use you're using the leaves, oh, cool. and that aids in digestion. It mm -hmm. it uh, warms the heart, they say, and it's you know very. Now, I've very heard of. I see it's marked borage. I've seen that used for tea, but it also looks like comfrey. That's it does. It's similar. It yeah. has a similar look to mm -hmm. to comfrey. The blue the flowers. And the blue flowers are edible. You can sugar them, put them on cakes, uh -huh. um, and it, the saying goes, borage for courage. Hmm. And that, um, it strengthens the heart, they say. They, it was used a lot in beers, and you can uh, do several things with it. And it's, there's something in it that makes you happy and courageous. Yay. So everyone needs a little bit of borage. Okay, in dreamers, let's paint, plant some borage. My <laughs> channel's called Homestead Dreamers. Ah. So we, I call my viewers dreamers. <laughs> <coughs> Another excellent herb, this is called feverfew or featherfew, and this is an excellent um, use for migraines. Wow. So, uh, a leaf or two a day, chew it. Um, itty bitty, too. Those it's kind of, it's yeah. pretty bitter, but uh -huh. some people put it in a sandwich or you just take it with a glass of water. That's good for chronic headaches, migraines. It's got little daisy flowers little on daisy. top. And it's a really cute little plant. Yeah. Do you grow any chamomile here? We do have chamomile on the other side. <coughs> um, sorrel, a lot of people are familiar with that. Yeah. Aids in digestion, especially with fatty meat. It's good to have some sorrel. And we have um, some marjoram. We have some wormwood. Now, what's the wormwood used for? Wormwood was commonly used for worms. You make a tea out of it. Um, and it it helps any of that any worms inside you. Okay. Very good. Centalina is excellent for moth deterrent. They would put this in sachets and put it in your closet. Uh, good for keeping fleas fleas out. I want to see what that smells like. It kind of has a medicinal smell. It's mm. kind of strong. Some people plant it on your patio. Mm. I keep the mosquitoes away. Just kind of brush it every once in a while. Here we have our chamomile. Oh yeah. Some nice big carpets forming here. That looks beautiful. Pennyroyal, um, a very pungent herb, can be used for culinary uses. Uh, also is used for worms in a larger dose. Mm. Sage. I like, a lot of people say to pinch your herb flower so you get better leaves, but I really, you can use the flowers, a lot of the herb flowers, and even for presentation, it's just gorgeous. So mm -hmm. I always let my sage bloom. Mm. <laughs> and see, a lot, a lot of other things people know. Um, salad burnet. This is a delicious plant. The leaves taste like cucumber. Oh. Nice to just throw in with a salad or your cucumbers and tomatoes dressed with, uh, you know, oil and vinegar and just a really nice herb. It's nice to have some different greens. All right, dreamers, I know you're all looking for your seed catalogs now to be <laughs> trying to order some of these seeds. Yes. 
And here's your flowers. Lots of flowers. They're beautiful. What are the fuchsia colored ones down here? They're standing out, so. Those with the downy leaves. Yeah. That's called a rose campion. And that is a perennial. Hmm, I like that. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful. Think it'll grow in Maryland? Yes. Good. I'll have to get me some of that. I like the, it's got like a Dusty Miller color to the mm -hmm. leaves. I yeah. really like that. Huh. And against the purple. So pretty. And that's the okay. only other thing I can think of is uh, the chase tree. The this what? Is a, this is an excellent um, plant to have. It's uh, a source of our stick as well. We, oh. we cut uh, from the same spot every year and then it sends out suckers and we use the canes and a lot of our And what's the name of it? Chaste tree or Vitex agnus castus. Wow. And this is still used medicinally today um, for women's complaints. Uh, <laughs> you might have heard of chaste berries or Vitex berries. Okay. So it's used for menopausal type problems uh, and a beautiful um, aromatic leaves. Excellent. And could I have your name, please? My name is Jenny. Jenny, you've been a wonderful guide, and oh, yeah. thank you for all your expertise. And Dreamers, I'll be posting this as soon as I can, and enjoy. Thank you.